updates that we want to share with you. If you're just joining us now, uh, there has been quite a development in the marathon, uh, in the Boston Marathon bombings from earlier this week. And if you have been with us throughout the morning, then you know what the latest updates are. We do want to take you back and go through this timeline once again. This all started uh, last evening with a robbery at a 7-Eleven that was followed by a shooting at MIT, um, which resulted in the death of a campus police officer, then a carjacking of a Mercedes SUV. That car was discovered with two suspects in it in Watertown, Massachusetts. Uh, that resulted in the pursuit in a very residential neighborhood of Watertown. There was an exchange of gunfire with two men who now police say are uh, were extremely dangerous. One of them is still armed and dangerous in that Mercedes. Several explosive devices, just goes to show how dangerous, several explosive devices were thrown from this carjacked car. One of the suspects in that car was uh, struck by a bullet, uh, taken into custody, but we now know that he has deceased. Now the big thing is to search for this second suspect who is considered very dangerous. The quote from local police was, this is a terrorist. He came here to kill people. Another quote from local police, that the suspect is consistent with the uh, suspect number two from the Boston Marathon bombings. He is in the, he, he's believed to be possibly in that community right now. Residents are told not to answer their doors unless it's police, and police do expect to go door to door. And also motorists in the area told not to pick anybody up. Let's listen to some sound from a local police officer. We are concerned about securing that area and making sure that this individual is taken into custody. We believe this to be a terrorist. We believe this to be a man who's come here to kill people. We need to get him in custody. And he is described as a white male with curly hair. And if you've seen the FBI pictures that were released from the Boston Marathon bombings, he is in fact described as suspect number two, the one who is wearing the white ball cap. And this is not only a fluid situation, but a dangerous situation. Police are asking everybody in the area uh, to stay inside of their homes, only answer the door if the person on the other side has identified themselves as a police officer. And they are saying that their plan is to go into uh, keeping everybody safe. Uh, that's the mode that they're in. So they are going to go door to door and block to block. They do want to talk to everybody that's in the home. They want to make sure that they get this guy uh, before any more time goes on. As you can tell from what we've been saying, he is an incredibly dangerous person. Explosives, gunfire. They want to make sure they nab him. All right. Stay with us, everybody. That's going to conclude this half hour's coverage. Diana Perez, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm John Muller. We continue our breaking news this morning. A wild scene coming out of the Boston area, specifically Watertown, where a suspect is dead. The manhunt for a second suspect continues, and this according to local police, is connected to the Boston Marathon bombings. We are getting some confirmation of that. We want to go right out to our correspondent, Brian Ross, who has been on the scene throughout the, uh, the morning, uh, collecting as much information as possible. Brian, thank you for joining us once again. What's the very latest? Very latest news, a terrorist is at large. That's how the police here view it. He is the man who was identified yesterday by the FBI as suspect number two in the marathon bombings. He and his partner, suspect number one, uh, began the evening apparently with an attempted stick up at a 7 Eleven store in Cambridge. Uh, they then went on to MIT where they got in a gun battle with the uh, MIT police and killed an MIT police officer. That led to a, a wild uh, chase by car. Uh, from Cambridge into neighboring Watertown. Uh, more gunfire here. At that point, uh, suspect number one, uh, identified by the FBI, uh, was shot. But suspect number two fled. So at this point, uh, suspect number two is at large. Uh, they believe he is dangerous and he is armed. Uh, the residents of this town have been told to stay inside. Do not answer the door for anybody uh, other than someone who can be identified as a police officer. Uh, the people along the route of the chase described gunfire, uh, bombs going off into the night, uh, grenades being thrown. Uh, so suspect number two remains at large. There's a huge police presence here uh, with people looking for him. Uh, he's hiding under the cover of darkness. Uh, the sun comes up in about an hour. That will probably aid the search. But at the moment, it remains a very tense situation with a man who uh, they believe uh, will murder at will at large. Clearly, Brian, they're not only worried about catching this uh, second suspect, uh, they're also worried about potential explosives that he may or may not have planted uh, along the way. Is that correct? 
That's absolutely correct. Uh, one of our producers was told that uh, be careful, there are explosives uh, everywhere. Uh, we were told at one point not to use cell phones for fear they might trigger an explosive. So uh, these are people who they suspect uh, have uh, skills in building bombs and had lots of other bombs apparently. And uh, you know, one of the questions I think that is raised is, uh, based on the identification of these two men as suspects one and two, from the marathon bombings, I think many of us were surprised that they were still in this area. They had not taken off at all. And uh, the additional information we have is that they had a car loaded uh, with explosives, uh, which suggests perhaps uh, they had not finished whatever their task was. Brian, two clearly um, individuals who wanted to cause a lot of harm. Just going back to what uh, police were, were telling us about what they did just on this spree alone, a robbery, a carjacking, they shot and killed a, uh, a, a um, an MIT police officer. There was another uh, transit police officer who was struck and is now in critical condition at the hospital. And the concern is for the residents also. They, they want to make sure that everybody stays inside and everybody Everybody um, is vigilant because until the sun comes up, there's no telling where this this man is. Right now, uh, is there any development on um, as far as how police are going to keep the area safe? Is it still just the door to door? Have you heard any updates on that? Uh, it is door to door. Uh, phone calls are being made at random to residents, so they call reverse uh, 911 calls. Uh, and they have an area where they think he may be, and they've tried to square that off. Uh, but with darkness, that is an ally for someone trying to hide uh, for a fugitive. Uh, but that is the concern. It's, uh, it's probably about a mile down the road from, from where I'm standing right now, uh, where this is taking place. But it's a very tense situation there. They have no doubt that this person is prepared to kill again. Yeah, we saw those cars behind you, Brian, speeding uh, behind you. So certainly fluid. Uh, take care out there, and we'll check in in a little bit. ABC's Brian Ross, thank you. And we now want to move uh, to ABC's Pierre Thomas, who is in Washington. Pierre, you've been in contact with your FBI sources throughout the evening and the morning. What can you tell us? Well, the FBI says now they're trying to assist the State and Boston PD in searching uh, for suspect number two, uh, the suspect who had the white cap on that we've been seeing in the videos and the photographs. They said that is the highest priority. They believe that this person is a terrorist who is willing to kill, as Brian just noted, at will, that he's likely capable of taking hostages and will likely try to shoot his way out or bomb his way out of any situation. Uh, law enforcement officials also say priority number two is to try to get control of whatever explosive devices that have been left behind. Uh, law enforcement officials are telling me this could not be a more urgent, dangerous situation than you have unfolding uh, in that area right now. One suspect in, uh, was actually uh, in, taken into custody and we have told that that first suspect has deceased, but it's clearly there, there's no time to let down because this is a very dangerous situation uh, Pierre, Thank you. Uh, Diana. Uh, Pierre, I do have one more question for you, uh, if you if you have a moment there. Um, where where do we go for now? Uh, you mentioned earlier that the release of those two pictures from the uh, from the FBI had created a beehive situation. What what exactly does that mean for this case? Well, what the FBI believes is that when they made the decision to release the photographs and the video, that that would create intense pressure on both the public to give information but also on the suspects to do something and that they would likely make some kind of mistake at least that was the hope and that this would somehow run them to ground so you see literally hours after those photographs and video are released this is exactly what appears to have happened i'm pierre thomas reporting for us from washington thank you very much we're going to take a break we'll be right back <laughs> 